Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's session on powering sustainable development. My name is Naomi Jones. I'm a delegate from New Zealand, and I, uh, as was just introduced, I'm the commissioning engineer with BP. It is my absolute pleasure to be joined by these three men here on stage, and we will have a fantastic conversation today, I'm sure. But first, I just wanted to take the liberty of talking a little bit about myself and why it is that I do what I do, because I believe it touches upon some of the central themes of today's conversation. I became an engineer because I wanted to solve problems. The energy industry was an obvious choice for me because, quite frankly, our world runs on energy. It's a global need and it has significant challenges and vast opportunity for improvement through technology, policy, and innovation. As more and more people are lifted out of extreme poverty in this world, our energy demand globally is going to continue increasing. You then couple that with the definite need to take decisive action on climate change, and we have a complex problem that's going to take brilliant minds across the world and all of us to solve. For the past five years, I've had the immense privilege of being on the front line of energy infrastructure development in Oman. I've been working with a fantastic team of international people, experts in their field, to design, construct, commission, and just two weeks ago, start up a giant gas facility, literally in the middle of absolutely nowhere in Oman. Over the next few years, with various expansion projects, the Kazan facilities will supply around 40% of Oman's domestic gas production, literally transforming industry in that country, creating jobs and providing prosperity for generations to come. So a huge shout out to all the Oman delegates here today and to Ramaitha in particular, I tried to find you earlier today, so if you're out there, I really, really want to meet you, um, the, the woman from Oman that was talking in the poverty se session earlier. <laughs> So for now, I'm going to hand over to the first of our presenters. Felipe Albelaez is the regional president for BP Latin America. He's responsible for overseeing exploration, development, and production operations for BP across Brazil, Venezuela, Mexico, and Argentina. He's an engineer by training, and he has over 20 years' experience in the energy industry, having worked in a wide variety of roles, including investment banking, mergers and acquisitions, and consulting. In his previous role for BP, Felipe was Chief Commercial Officer for BP's Integrated Supply and Trading Business, leading business development across the gas value chain. Felipe, welcome to the stage. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, first of all, I just want to say it's a real honor to be here. Um, it's a bit challenging, frankly, because uh, coming in from a company like BP uh, with this sort of audience, but uh, I hope we're going to share a video about what our company is doing around the world um, to try to face the challenge that we presented earlier about um, energy poverty and how we're looking to solve what we hold as a dual challenge. Greater need for energy around the world so that people can prosper, um, can come out of poverty, um, can industrialize, and can create jobs, employment. Um, but at the same time, how do we manage our carbon footprint? At BP, we're very conscious of that challenge, and we're trying to bring our talent, our ingenuity, in young engineers and um, you know, talented folks across the world to try to solve this. So I'll start with a quick video. Um, if we could play that, please. Oh, the audio is not working. <laughs> You're not getting the audio. No, oh, it's okay. We are a global energy business with enormous reach across the world's energy system. From deep sea to desert, from rigs to retail, we find and produce resources refine and market products. We track, trade, and deliver the world's energy in real time. 
Only a few companies on Earth can solve some of the problems we can. Yet our industry is changing faster than at any other moment in our lifetime. The energy mix is shifting towards lower carbon sources, driven by advanced technologies, growing concern about the environment, and changing patterns of demand. In BP, we will help drive this transition, and our business will be transformed by it. The energy we provide has always lifted people out of poverty and powered economic growth. Today, we face the dual challenge of meeting society's need for more energy, while at the same time reducing carbon emissions. As scientists and engineers, we recognize the urgency of the climate challenge, and we will be part of the solution. Every part of our business has a tremendous amount to bring to this. Operational excellence is essential to our success. We have built BP back up by making it safer and more resilient. New technologies are helping us to produce more oil more efficiently from existing resources in ways we never thought possible before. Modernizing the way we work, we will make our operations lower cost and more sustainable. From governments to consumers, people have new choices about the energy they use. To meet the rising demand for cleaner energy, we will shift our focus towards gas. But this has to be done in the right way. So we are going to lead on reducing methane emissions. With a revolution in mobility underway, we are innovating to produce new efficient fuels and biofuels. In the future, the way we deliver heat, light, and mobility will change dramatically. But there's not going to be one single energy answer. We will work on multiple fronts, growing our renewable energy business alongside a dynamic venturing arm. New carbon solutions will emerge from creative collaborations and new business models. Amid this disruption, we know some experiments will fail. Others, we can scale. We have navigated change before. Our people love solving big, complex challenges that matter. We have a real contribution to make to the world's ambition of a low-carbon future. This transition requires a spirit of invention and purpose, and we can help. Thank you. I'll Thank you. I hope you, you've heard some of the messages there. Um, I'm just going to point out a couple of kind of key things about energy trends that um, we think are valid in BP. Um, then I'll actually flip to describing some of the th new businesses we're investing in and the things we're doing in BP to embrace what we believe will be a transformational era in energy over the next um, 30 or 50 years. First thing, I think it's mentioned already, but um, from, from a BP perspective, as humanity um, economic activity continues to grow over time, um, there will be necessarily a greater need for energy. And I think that is very much a consensus view across anyone you ask, um, either in economic planning, government, etc. We also hold that view in BP. The good news, though, you can see on the chart here on the left, is actually the world is becoming more energy efficient. We're using less energy per every dollar of uh, per capita GDP across the world. 
Um, this is good news from the perspective that we're going to need less energy to bring people out of poverty as we move forward um, in the planet. And that is certainly something that we embrace at BP and we internally are working to promote. Um, if we can get the pointer to work, let's see. Can we move to the next slide, please? Thank you. Uh, one of the things we see and we embrace very much is the penetration of renewables. Um, two kind of fundamental points about um, energy in the world. From a hydrocarbon perspective, uh, the industry is becoming much more efficient, and we are now living in an era of resource abundance. This means that there are more hydrocarbons than the world is going to need over the next 50 years. This will make energy more affordable, which is a good thing. Um, but we also simultaneously see innovation and greater penetration of renewable energy that will actually reduce the consumption of hydrocarbons in the world um, in the longer term. We see renewables in particularly becoming very relevant in the power sector, in power generation. And as you can see from the chart here, particularly in emerging markets, uh, renewables are going to play a substantial role. As you can see in the chart, China's growth in the renewable sector is going to be larger than the US and Europe combined over the next 20 years. So how the world um, migrates towards renewable energy, and in particular in the emerging markets, is going to be fundamental to resolving this challenge of greater energy need and managing our carbon footprint. Um, I want to quickly talk about some of the things we're doing at BP. So in BP, we're investing in five key areas. Um, we're investing in, in um, bio and low carbon products. So what is this? This is new technologies and innovative technologies where, for example, we're manufacturing bio jet out of trash, um, out of actually residue in some US cities. We're looking to test that technology and hopefully roll it out across cities across the world. These are the sort of examples where you can reduce the carbon footprint and maintain the mobility and energy requirements. Um, we're looking at advanced mobility technology as well. We're partnering with companies like VW and Avis looking at developing applications and technology for autonomous vehicles and for actually making rental fleets much more efficient across the customer base. Um, we're looking at power uh, in the power sector. We're looking in particular low carbon power and investing in that sector, um, particularly in combined cycle gas power generation. But we're also looking at other lower uh, power footprint um, power generation technologies across the world. You saw in the video, we're obviously one of the core players in the oil and gas sector, we're one of the core players in uh, wind power. We've made recent investments in the US, in Australia, in Argentina, markets all over the world. Um, the other interesting aspect here is digital transformation. Um, we believe digital is going to completely transform the energy space. Um, and we're very much embracing that MVP in many ways. It's, making, it's going to make the economy more uh, energy efficient, but it's also going to make energy companies more efficient. And that will actually allow for greater reliability of our systems, greater efficiency of how we produce energy, and that in itself would reduce the footprint and the environmental um, cost of uh, producing energy. Um, and lastly, we're also working in carbon management. Um, this is a space where we've been active for many years. BP is active in all the carbon trading schemes around the world. We work with our customers to help them offset their carbon footprint, um, but we work also with our industrial businesses to do the same. And we're becoming more active as well in uh, carbon management, carbon sequestration technology. So as you can see, um, BP is basically towards the future looking at investing a minimum of $200 million a year in environmentally sound technologies. And we believe we can actually lead in this transformation in the energy space. And we're very much committed to do that. And, uh, you know, we'll be relying, frankly, in the young generations, young engineers like, uh, like Naomi, to come up with innovative solutions and invest in, in new products and uh, energy solutions. So thank you very much. Thank you, Felipe. Our second speaker today is Morten Dierholm, the group's senior global vice president for Vestas Wind Systems. Vestas has been producing wind turbines for nearly 40 years and are currently the only global energy company dedicated exclusively to wind power. 
Morton himself leads Bestas' marketing, communications, and public affairs activities from the company's headquarters in Denmark. He has extensive global experience in the wind industry, particularly in Asia, where he has worked for three years as head of business development and government affairs for Vestas in China. Morton, thank you. Thank you so much. Is this mic on? I want to thank you all for coming and uh, listening to this session here. And I basically come with a message of optimism. I couldn't help notice that in the, um, the BP video, um, you talked about renewables as an alternative form of energy. I can guarantee you that we are not alternative energy. We are very much in the mainstream. In fact, what I see right now is a total and very rapidly transformation of the entire energy sector. What I see is the end of fossil fuels coming to a very, very quick end. And it's going to be amazing. It's going to go very fast, much faster than any of the oil majors would probably th say or think. So what's driving this is basically a rapid decline of prices for renewables. I mean, we have seen absolutely amazing price levels for wind, for solar, and other renewables over the last couple of years. In fact, most markets right now, we are cheaper than fossil fuels. And that's without counting all the subsidies that fossil fuel gets from governments all around the world, and without fossil fuels having to pay for all the mess that they create for the environment. And what's that leading to? I mean, the entire electricity sector needs to adapt to all these renewables that are being deployed at a rapid scale. So we're starting to see all kinds of new energy systems, policy mechanisms, price signals, all kinds of things that are changing to adapt to what is basically much more flexible power than what we're used to in terms of coal base load. And we're also seeing massive innovations in terms of, for example, storage. And one of the last arguments that the fossil fuel sector will have in terms of staying on the grid is that wind and solar are intermittent. But when cheap storage really starts coming into play here, that argument falls away. And we are seeing storage now coming down to price levels that are very competitive. So we're going to see a system of wind and solar and storage being the main, mainstream uh, system going forward. That's going to be absolutely amazing. And then you see, on top of that, a massive electrification going on. You just had Audi here stating their ambitions, but you see it all across. All the car companies, all the major manufacturers, they want to go electric. You see countries, one country after, after the other, putting hard targets in terms of phasing out gasoline from their roads. And it's such a rapid transformation right now that Everyone who had predicted anything about renewables and electrification a couple of years ago are just shaking their heads, heads in, uh, in disbelief. So it is a disruption that is going on now, and it's really, really, really massive. And then on top of that, you start seeing all these massive corporates, all the big companies, Unilever, IKEA, Coca-Cola, all the Silicon Valley companies starting to invest massively themselves into renewables. Not because they want to look good, but because it makes economic sense. And that's really a powerful transformation as well. So you combine all of these factors, and what you see in front of you is a landscape that's basically going to go fossil-free. And I hope you can all see the point of joining the fossil-free future rather than staying in the past. Thank you. Thanks, Morten. Our final speaker for today is Cardo Ferrara, the Sustainability Manager for NL in Colombia. NL's primary mission is to open energy access to more people, to open up the world of energy to new technologies and new ways of managing and using energy, with sustainability at the center of its approach. Cardo himself is an economist with extensive experience in energy, renewables, sustainability, 
environmental management, and international relations. He has worked extensively in China, Italy, and now Colombia on a portfolio of renewable projects, as well as strategic policy and planning for the NL Group. Thank you, Carlo. Thank you, Naomi. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I have to stand up because I want to really enjoy this crowd. <laughs> I mean, you are beautiful, you are beautiful. I would like to thank you. I can feel your power, I have to say. I mean, it's, re it's strange, no? Three of us, four of us, sorry, speaking about the power, but you are the power. Keep in mind this. Keep in mind this forever. I'm quite optimist, I have to say. I'm a, an economist, strange economist, environmental economist. So I focused my attention always on uh, this concept of scarcest resources that, nef that, that is on the basis of definition of economy and later is forgotten in the, in the model, in the mainstream theory. So I focused my attention on environment, and there has been a, a period that I was extremely optimistic. There was the market of CO2. This was the environmental externality that finally, as a prize, and people was investing in renewables because it was clear that there were, we were too much pushing the climate change. Later, well, something happened. Now we are on the right track against him. So, and I keep being optimistic. And why? In spite of those challenges that are quite hard, and I mean, you know better than me, and there has been amazing speakers illustrating them. I would like to focus on a couple of them, climate change, resource stress, urbanization, and digital and technological revolution. But what does it mean for the energy sector? It means opportunity in terms of infrastructure. In terms, it means, and I agree, means, but is needed an upgrade of our grids in order to manage the amount of renewable that are coming into the energy matrix at global level. But what makes me, makes me optimistic is the fact that Huge organization, they realize that uh, sustainability is at the core of the business itself. And take in mind, sustainability, not corporate social responsibility. Sustainability, we have to address with our core business the issues that the world is facing, because otherwise there is no future. And this is in particular for company, like energy company, that by its nature itself has a medium, medium long-term horizon in front of them. So a company like Enel, I'm proud to say, that committed formally at the launch of the United Nations uh, um, SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals, we committed ourselves quantitatively to support for them. And what is making me optimistic? The investors are following how companies are performing within the, the, within the sustainability indexes. And not simply the social responsible investor. Here you can see how much they, they own the, the share, the 8% of our fleet. I mean, it's quite impressive, but even the mainstream investors are taking care more and more of your performance, sustainability performance. BlackRock, CEO, BlackRock is the largest fund, asset fund in the world, sent a letter two years ago and this year stressing to the CEO of, 500, of the 500th company, biggest 500th company in the world, stressing that for too long they've been caring in optimizing the short-term return on investment without taking care about social and environmental issues that are posing the real threat to our economic system. This on the investor side, and clearly you are too young to think about investing, but the world is opening up opportunity to all of us as consumers and as investors. You will have the opportunity to invest in sustainable, responsible funds. You will have the opportunity as customers to pick up services from a company that is well rated within the sustainability indexes, and not everyone. How we are translating this? We are translating this by 
giving access to the energy to more people. In the world, still 70% of the world doesn't have access to electricity. All, sorry, I didn't stress enough that we committed to four of the, the sustainable development goals, one of them, the most relevant, to be carbon neutral by 2050. And this is not just an advertisement. This has been certified as a science-based target by the United Nations, because we, sh we showed them our books, we showed them our industrial plan, we are investing just renewable through all over the world. We are testing new technology. This picture is coming from a plant in Oyage, we're at 3,700 meters on the level of the sea. We are testing a first power plant that is combining solar, geothermal, wind in the middle of the desert at 3,700. We are adopting new way for people to manage energy. This is a, a, a smart metering. This will be the base of the smart city. This will be the base in order to optimize consu consumption and optimize so much component of renewable within the system. We will need a demand side management in real time. But this is the interesting point, this is the interesting issue for you as customers. With the demand side in real time, you as a customer, you will, you will have more and more services. So energy. Depends from the country. Clearly, there are countries where it's more liberalized, countries where it's not so liberalized, but soon it will be a service as other. And soon you, with your choice of consumption, you will pick up which company to support and which one not. New uses. Well, <laughs> Colombian, how many? Well, we have a lot of Colombian in the room. This is Transmilenio, so loved and dated by the Colombian because it's the mass system transportation here in Bogota. We launched in June the first electric bus in Bogota. It's the largest in the world. And we are testing it in order to collect data, in order to see how much variable is to, for the next uh, tender to have a percentage of electric transmillennial with the transmillennial flea. <laughs> Sorry, Massey, we are not alone. We are doing clearly with uh, the major of Bogota with the, uh, and with BWEDI, our, our uh, technological partner. And new partnership. I mean, the idea of the big company that can do everything by themselves is finished. In particular for a company that, as NLE is present in the all value chain of the energy. We cannot think to be the best one to innovate in every single detail. In particular, with all the mind side that is opening up, there are outside of the, you are there. You are the one that we are, that are probably right now testing an application that could be extremely useful for us to reach the gap between demand and offer, to reach the needs of people that are still without energy. So that is the reason why we are arranging Gagaton, in order to scout the best idea outside there from small starter start that can be probably the one that <laughs> has the story that we listened this morning. One startup that can really change the world and, and leaving a print. So I don't say I'm optimistic because uh, I'm a <laughs> An economist, an environmental economist, I've seen, I started when the environment for the economy was forgotten, and it's becoming more and more and more and more relevant. I'm optimistic because I've been living in China nine years and I've seen the boom of renewables. I'm optimistic because right now I can see how companies are embracing deeply the idea of creating shared value. Isolated happiness, isolated Welfare for a company is not possible. It has to be shared with the communities where we work on. It has to be shared with the ecosystem where we work. Otherwise, it's simply unsustainable. That is the reason why I'm so optimistic, because right now, and I have to say, I'm impressed by the story that we heard it, and I'm impressed by the story that we will re hear it later, but right now I'm also quite happy and proud, because I'm working for a company that is matching my personal dreams 
with the vision of the company itself. We embrace the vision of being an open power in order to provide our services to more people, powering local economies, expanding energy access, because open power means tackling some of the biggest challenges that the world right now is facing. And we cannot, as a company, as a private sector, we cannot forget about it. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, hey, so thank you very much to everybody, um, uh, to everyone here on stage, and thank you for your attention. We're just about out of time, uh, but each of us, I think we're going to head over to the Q&A area uh, in, in the break. We don't have an official Q&A session, but we welcome any questions from any of you. So please come over and have a chat, and thank you for having us here today. Something, something really, I think, really fantastic to see you guys on the stage here. Mm -hmm. We know that eight years ago when we started One Young World, we could not have had one of the oil giants on the stage was someone like Vestas. It was a discussion that we couldn't have. And I just think it's thrilling to see you all here today slugging it out. And one of the biggest, <laughs> one of the biggest industries in the world transforming is amazing. I really, I salute all of you. And I know very well with you guys, the transformation that's going on there. And Vestas obviously is a seriously popular company around here. But it's fantastic, and thank you so much. I hope you've got lots of questions for them in the break. Thank you, panelists, and thank you to our chair, Naomi.